Hey everyone, let's talk about sequences. So sequences are just list of numbers in a given order. For example, here I have list of four sequences. We want to know if the sequence converge or diverge. Converge meaning it settles to a number, a finite value, not infinity or negative infinity, or the limit doesn't exist. If those case happens, then we call the sequence diverges. So let's see if we can uh, list some numbers for um, sequence a n. So think of a sequence as a function on the natural numbers instead of the entire real numbers. So this sequence, if we were to list some of the terms in this sequence, if you pick n equals one, you got the first term of the sequence. So you'll have one minus one over one squared, you'll have zero. The second term of the sequence when n is equal to two. So you'll have one minus two, over two square, so that'd be negative um, one over two square, so that'd be four. And then the next number will be for n equals three. So when n equals three, you'll have one minus three, that's negative two over three square, that's nine. And then the next number you'll have for n equals four, um, one minus four, that's negative three over four square, 16. So you get the idea, the list just continues. So this is our first term of the sequence, so we call it a1. This is our second term, a2. This is a3, a4, and so on. Now we want to know, will this list converge or diverge? So you pretty much take the limit of this formula. So I take the limit as n gets larger of this formula a n. So this is the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 minus n over n squared. So as n gets larger and larger, this will grow much faster than this piece. Therefore, we can say that this sequence is going to go to zero, which means that a n converges. So this is how we can determine if a sequence converge or diverge. If you get a finite value, the sequence converges. Now let's do the same thing for the second problem. So we're going to go ahead and take the limit of this sequence. Now, if you wanna know some of the terms of the sequence, you can start listing. When n equals one, you have negative two to the one power over one factorial. When n equals two, you'll have negative two to the second power over two factorial. When n equals three, you'll have negative two to the third power over three factorial. So factorials, that's a very fast growing function, as you can see it from the list. One factorial, well, we know that's one. So you can replace this with one. Two factorial is two times one, that's two. Three factorial is three times two times one, that's six, and so forth. So you get the idea how this function is growing. So now if you take the limit as n goes larger of negative two to the n power over n factorial. So as you can see that your denominators are gonna grow much faster than the numerator. So this is gonna grow much faster than this. Therefore, this limit is gonna go to zero, which means that this sequence Vn converges. So we can also say that for this sequence. Now let's take a look at the next one, Cn. So for this sequence, well, if you were to write down some of the terms, Let's see what happens. So when n equals one, you have negative one to the one power times one over one plus one, that's two. And then when n equals two, you have positive one times two over two plus one, that's three. And then when n equals three, you have negative one times three over uh, three plus one, that's four. And then the next term is positive one times four over five and so on. So just let's clear out the multiplication. So our first term is negative one half, second term is positive two third, next term is negative three fourth. And the next term is positive four fifth. And you can imagine the next will be negative, positive, negative, positive. So you start to see what's going on on this list. Now, if you take the limit, as n approaches infinity of this sequence, negative one to the n times n 
over n plus one, the, the values are constantly becoming positive, negative, positive, negative. So there is an alternation in our sequence. And therefore the limit, it doesn't exist. So since the limit does not exist, we cannot say it converges. So we're going to say that the sequence CN diverges. So if the limit failed to exist, or if it goes to infinity or negative infinity, the limit of the sequence will diverge. So let's take a look at the last problem. So for this formula, we're going to determine if the sequence will converge or diverge. So we'll do the same thing, we'll take the limit. You could write out the list, but I think you got the idea. So I'm just gonna go ahead and treat it as a limit problem. So the limit as n approaches infinity of square root of two n over n plus one. So I can use the limits property and push the limit inside the square root. So we're taking square root of the limit as n approaches infinity to n over n plus one. Now here, this limit is going to be the coefficient of the highest degree of the denominator and the numerator. So they happen to be the same. So this limit will go to just two over one and under the square root. So this is just square root of two which means that the sequence an converges since we got a finite value. Right, so I hope this helps you with sequences. See you next time.